Okay, so for this video, we're going to talk about using a capacitor on a breadboard. So this is a pretty large value capacitor, regular capacitor. It's not a super capacitor, but it's 1000 microfarad, and I think that's my largest non-super capacitor capacitor. I have both pins at the negative rail because it's a good idea to make sure the capacitor is discharged before you use it. It discharges instantly when you do that and you only want to do that when you're certain there's not a really high voltage across the capacitor because that is a short circuit and so a lot of current will flow. If there's a high voltage across the capacitor it's holding a lot of charge and then you'd want to discharge it through a resistor. But in uh, any case we got that out of the way. That's the uh, main safety so far for uh, capacitors not to get shocked or damage other stuff by a capacitor you don't realize is storing a lot of energy. So here's what some other capacitors look like. These tend to be very very low value. These tend to be a bit higher value and these tend to be a bit higher value and uh, they all work the same other than uh, this one's polarized this side always has to be more negative or equal to this side whereas these you can charge uh, either side higher or lower than the other one that's why they don't have a marking like this to indicate polarity and the leads are different lengths of these uh, polarized ones if you don't trim them the positive side is longer the negative side is shorter kinda like how you identify LEDs by which side goes more positive and negative when they're forward biased so let's get to building an actual circuit so to begin with we're gonna make a circuit where we charge the capacitor and we already discharged it so we know it's not charged to a high voltage and uh, it's a smaller value capacitor so it's not gonna hold a lot of charge but uh, we know that it's not holding a charge so we don't have to worry about high current either because capacitors do not limit current they all put whatever current you uh, ask them to until they're discharged and they accept whatever current you ask them to until they are charged to the voltage you're applying so we got that to the bottom of the switch I went over these switches in the last video but I used the smaller switch these I keep on the board they, uh, the leads here are a little bit bigger than uh, leads for components these pins and so they kind of stretch the spot and I spaced them for uh, specific jumpers that I have so in any case uh, these stay on the board all the time and uh, so I'm going to stick with them so we want this so when I close the switch the capacitor charges so the bottoms always connected the bottom two pins and the top two pins are always connected so technically this is all one row wherever uh, these pins connect instead of uh, having a gap between them now they're connected so I'm gonna work from left to right kind of keep the clutter down and make it a little easier to see and generally when you see circuits drawn out they move uh, left to right we're gonna use a green LED to indicate that it's charging so now let's uh, let's put the uh, power supply on there because we're uh, res restricted to how much space we got as you can see there with that so that's something to be aware of when you place the switches so I'm still going to uh, put the uh, long lead of the LED the anode above the short lead but the short leads going to connect to the switch and uh, it's not sliding in terribly easy let's go over here see if these two work a little bit better there we go I think if I get a higher quality breadboard they'll uh, they'll fit in better that's something I should do soon so we'll take a 220 ohm resistor because we're dealing with a 5 volt power supply 220 ohms is enough to keep the LED from burning out and uh, or passing too high a current and it keeps the LED from getting too hot and so that's it for our charging so we will turn the uh, power supply on and when I hit the switch you should see the LED glow well the capacitor charges there we go and it went out quickly because the capacitor charges quickly 
these switches don't have uh, perfect contacts they kind of wear over time and uh, but uh, now the capacitor is charged to as high of a voltage as it will it's uh, 5 volts minus the voltage drop of the LED so it can't charge anymore the uh, voltages have equalized no current can pass through the resistor and that's how it goes when it's charging so for this particular setup we have to discharge it some way we're going to add circuitry to discharge it coming up but for now we can just use a jumper because we're using low voltage and this isn't storing a terribly high amount of current and so it discharges really quickly without too much uh, current flow and uh, now I'll hit the switch again you can see that the LED came on well the capacitor is charging but once it's charged up to the voltage the LED goes out so now we're going to take a better look at this I got the meter set to measure 20 volts or less I'll turn the power on and we're on the DC setting so that's what we're gonna be measuring DC so I got these alligator clips here that I attached jumper wires to and I'm gonna put the uh, blue one to the negative rail that's where the uh, negative side of the capacitor is plugged in and the red one I'm going to it's got the alligator clip there attach where uh, the capacitor attaches to the switch so now when I take the probes for the meter and that's the red probe so we'll do this one we'll just clip the probe right on there so you're not going to be able to see it anymore but uh, there you can see we got it clipped we have 3.2 volts so that's what we expect we have a 5 volt power supply I just charged this capacitor that was in that last clip it's holding the voltage pretty good it's going to slowly go down over time there's leakage in the capacitor and a tiny bit of current has to go through the meter to get a voltage reading so the smaller the value of the capacitor the less charge it will hold so that current leakage will make a bigger difference but in uh, any case we're measuring the voltage that's 5 volt power supply the LED takes about 1.8 volts to charge so when there's only a 1.8 volt difference between the power supply and the capacitor the LED is going to stop conducting the capacitor is going to start charging that's what we see here 5 minus uh, 1.8 uh, and so in any case let's take uh, the red jumper here and discharge the capacitor you'll see that it instantly drops to zero volts and it's going to rise up a little bit the uh, capacitors have a memory where these electrolytic capacitors have a memory especially where once you discharge them they slowly rise up a little bit towards the voltage they were at before it's not going to come anywhere near close to what it was but it will rise up a little bit so expect that so in any case we just just discharged it so now let's give it the uh, charge and make sure we can see this LED and you can see that the voltage went up pretty quickly and it stopped when the LED stopped and as current goes down through the LED it passes at a little bit lower voltage so we're going to get up to uh, a little more than 3.2 because it's only going to block about uh, 1.6 volts or so when a very slow amount of uh, current is going through it but in any case those are topics for more advanced videos the main takeaway is we have the power source voltage minus the LED voltage charging up the capacitor to a certain voltage and so now we don't want to discharge the capacitor every time in this way or by placing the capacitor into a single row here to short circuit it we want to discharge it with more circuitry so that's what we're going to use this switch for coming up next so now to discharge this capacitor we're going to keep the uh, setup the same to uh, add the discharge circuitry I should say we're going to take this jumper here because we have to connect this part of the circuit to this switch here and the easiest way is going to be to use this jumper I also have jumpers that are fit to go exactly from uh, this pin to either the pin on top or the pin on bottom as I said before 
this runs straight across so I think it'll get less cluttered if I just plug the wire here so we have a conduction point through that lead through the switch that's always conducted there it's only separated top to bottom through the wire and I'm gonna plug the wire in to the top part of this switch so this is what's called a node so even though there's a lot of stuff here it's conductive it's all conductive and so if you attach something right here or even over here it's just like attaching it right there there is a tiny bit of a resistance that may factor into really sensitive circuits but for most circuits this tiny bit of resistance between all these connections and stuff doesn't really matter so we call that a node it's one single conductive point so now we're going to take the resistor and actually let's do the LED we'll use the resistor to connect to the power rail and uh, normally though on schematics and stuff you would see the resistor come first but it conducts the same whether the uh, resistor is in front of the LED or the LED is in front of the resistor the anode though does have to go towards the more positive side of the circuit so when this capacitor charges it will have it will be more positive than this side and so we want the long lead the anode connected where the switch is that's important whether it's before or after the resistor the long lead has to be towards the more positive side and so now with the uh, another 220 ohm resistor so actually we could use a lower value but since the power source voltage is 5 volts it's uh, simple just to uh, keep using 220 ohm resistors higher value resistors will be even better I think I'll do a quick demonstration with uh, uh, maybe one kilo ohm resistors at the end to show that it takes longer to charge and longer to discharge and so you can see the effects a little bit better but in case I did leave the power supply on and uh, I can't remember if we discharged the capacitor already or not I don't think we did okay it looks like we did so let's charge the capacitor first I was blocking the LED but uh, hopefully you can see that charge so now let's discharge it and there you can see the red LED so now it's kind of flickering because I've used these switches quite a bit I think they're kind of worn they don't seem to have a terribly large number of uh, uses before they kind of wear down but in any case now it's discharged so we actually use the capacitor as a power source while it was discharging and then uh, we use the power source from uh, the wall outlet to this uh, converter that drops it to 5 volts right now we could either use 5 volts or 3.3 volts with this so that charges the capacitor through that route and then once the capacitor is charged we can use this switch to discharge it through that route and that's really how capacitors work no matter what they're doing uh, generally we don't use these regular capacitors to store energy to power stuff but you can see that uh, with the resistor we reduce the time that it takes to discharge that's RC time constant that's a future topic but uh, this circuit is uh, more intended to show you how you can use a capacitor in a circuit and ultimately capacitors are going to be charging and discharging in any circuit that they're in and they're going to be controlled in a large number of ways but the basic principle is the same and so now I attach the multimeter again we'll wrap it up after this but we can see here we got 1.62 volts as I said when uh, current gets really low these LEDs block about 1.6 volts so I can only discharge the capacitor down to about 1.62 volts no more current is gonna flow through you can see we're getting a tiny bit more there's a little trickle going through the LED but ultimately it's uh, blocking uh, current so in any case let's uh, give this capacitor a charge and you can see that it's going up oh by the way I forgot to mention that uh, I'm using two kilo ohm resistors now so the voltage is gonna take longer but now you can see we're at about 5 volts minus about 1.6, 1.8 volts through the LED. And so 
I swapped out the 220 ohm resistors to charge and discharge it for the 2 kilo ohm resistors. <clears throat> and since we're using the same value resistor, it's going to take about 10 times as long. Also, the meter is able to measure it easier, so it's going to have smoother transitions than what we saw. So let's do a uh, discharge and watch it go back down. So the voltage is changing fairly quickly for real time. You're going to see the uh, LEDs kind of flutter because the switches aren't making perfect contacts at this time. But in any case, you can see that the voltage changes. So we don't have much of a voltage swing as you can see here because the uh, because of the LEDs. So it's not going from 5 volts to 0 volts, which it would if we just had the resistors. In fact, let's do that. That's pretty quick. We'll uh, yank out the LEDs because they're just for visual effect. I have to shift the resistors so they're connected directly to the switches. There we go. So now let's get her all the way down to 0 volts. Now I won't have the LED to kind of indicate when the switch loses contact, but uh, it seems to regain contact pretty good. But there you can see we slowly went down to about zero volts, and it's actually going to slow down the change as you get closer to the final voltage. So now as we charge it, it's going to charge faster at first because there's more of a difference between the power source and the capacitor, and then it's going to slow down as it gets closer to the power source voltage. So it's the difference of voltage across the resistor. So we got 5 volts pretty pretty nicely and we'll drop back down to 0 volts. So you can see it pretty much instantly went from about 5 volts to 4 volts and uh, pretty quickly from uh, 4 to 3, 3 to 2. But especially once you get near 1, and I think the switch lost contact, it uh, slows down and uh, we should be dropping to zero maybe I got a bad connection somewhere maybe it's a switch but in any case you get the point 